Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to the Forgotten Coast, Episode 5, Storm Rock Boathouse. Uh, I'm really happy to be back with you guys explaining uh, my thought process and creation here as you are watching. Uh, and today we are going to work on kind of the structure of the area. I'm going to I'm going to call it that, but maybe that's not the best word. Uh, and what I mean though is basically like where, how the area is laid out, where the guests are going to walk and travel cuz one of the big parts of a real realism park that I think a lot of people uh, miss the ball on this one in in Planet Coaster is you have to make a park that's easy to get around in and has a nice flow to it, uh, but also still interesting. So an example would be, let's say like the most, like the easiest, I guess, best flow or um, accessibility of a park would be if you just had one large square or circle and then every coaster and ride or water park or water slide or whatever, kind of around it you know circularly around it so you can see everything and and the problem with that though is it gets a little boring if you just have one massive open space with everything in sight right so you want to make these immersive lands where you go from one area to another um, think of if you've ever been to Universal in Orlando uh, if you go to the Harry Potter world right you walk into the Diagon Alley um, and you're in this entirely new land and you can't even see the other uh, areas around it. So you want to make these interesting spaces, but at the same time, you want to make it so when the guests are in this space, they know where to go, they're not going to get lost, and it's clear on how to get places. So what I always see people do is they they might have really cool theming and a really nice um, some really nice aspects to their park, but it's just a bunch of squiggly paths that go at all different directions and there's not really a clear direction or um, orientation to their park right so if you're ever making a path and it goes on for a really long time with nothing in between that's probably a red flag um, if you ever are building shops that are crammed into a corner of a park with no like no clear way to get to them that's a red flag so and this happens all the time because you start building, you make something really cool, you want to add this, you want to add that, and all of a sudden you're, you run out of space and your park just kind of gets a little crazy. So we're trying to avoid that in this one, but I'm really trying to think through um, the realism aspect of how the park's going to get laid out, where the people are going to move between the sight lines, what you can see from different aspects of the park. Um, and that is kind of what a lot of this episode really is setting the stage for. Uh, I actually sat and pretty much looked at my screen as I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with this. Uh, just thinking, just trying to visualize kind of what the layout's going to look like. And I think I did that for about 30 minutes before I actually started building this in this episode. But um, to what I'm actually building here, this is going to be basically the kind of the VIP like cabana style seating that you would pay extra money to reserve or um, and have that access to for the whole day. Um, I've never actually had one of these myself in real life. They always seem kind of expensive costs that I'm not going to use when I'm at a water park. But a lot of people like this kind of stuff. If you're maybe a, you know elderly people or a family, someone who just wants to sit and relax most of the day while the kids are out playing and on the slides or whatever it is. Um, this is something that you see and I want to actually have this because of the size of the park I want to have this option in sort of every area of the park so everywhere you go you have a, at least a small section of this kind of VIP um, lounge areas that you can the guests can rent out for the day and in, in Storm Rock that section is here and I kind of wanted it to be on the waterfront but tucked away so we have it sort of built underneath the uh, mat racer slides. And this is definitely not done. You're gonna, I mean, you'll see the end product here, but there is a little bit of detailing I still need to do, such as some fence work, some kind of the whole underside of this pier to make it, you know, a little more realistic. It's kind of barren at the moment. But I did want to have this accessible to guests. 
So I built some paths in here and I let me tell you if you're ever and you guys know this I'm sure if you played the game if you're ever you know you're making something really think through where your paths are gonna be before because I actually didn't in this case and I was a little worried like oh shoot how am I gonna get these paths up here and thankfully it worked out okay but the paths in this game can be a nightmare if you don't think through precisely where you're gonna route them so that's my tip for the day I did add a restroom here I wanted this to be kind of its own self-sufficient that's not really the right word but um, this a place where they can get something to eat use the bathroom without having to leave their kind of VIP space so I did add a little shop here I think it's a churro shop just something a little snack for those people it wouldn't be something that the normal guests would have access to it's kind of just the the VIP little churro stand and maybe they sell some drinks and stuff too we'll we'll leave that up to the imagination so starting with some trim work here with the beams here I go again with those beams I always say it's one of my favorite pieces um, and I did you'll see in this video I color was a little bit of a challenge I wanted to keep the kind of gray tan brown colors uh, but you still like I've talked about in previous episodes you still need to have that that color pop somewhere so I'm trying to achieve that in this episode with the the lounge chairs um, what you're seeing are matching the colors of the uh, beacon racers which is sort of a tie to them um, each area of the park will have a different colored lounge chair which sort of matches the area it's in. I think that's a nice way to kind of create a thematic area inside a thematic area, right? So this is Storm Rock, but at the same time we're going to have this little area of Storm Rock that's kind of dedicated to the mat racers. And those the colors of the lounge chairs, even though it's such a simple, a simple aspect, it really ties those two together and it tells the the viewer or the eye, hey look, these go with these slides, this is a complete area. Same with the buildings, we'll try to have some sort of maybe a very subtle color, maybe some subtle oranges um, or teals, maybe some darker hues so they don't look as you know cartoony as you might imagine. Um, but just to tie them to the area, that's something I try to do a lot in my parks. And I think it's important in realism builds to think about that stuff. So I thought for a long time on how I was going to get the guests up here. And the first, I guess the easiest method would just be to have a big stairway. And even that alone was giving me troubles because I just couldn't think how, I couldn't think through how I wanted the, the direction of the stairs to point. It sounds really trivial, but um, like I said, we're, I was really trying to think through how I wanted the guests to maneuver through this space. Um, and I decided on actually going with a ramp setup because, again, I, w I wanted to make it realistic. I want to include some ADA uh, handicap accessible areas wherever I could. And I thought, you know what, this isn't the place to slouch. This would be, especially with the VIP seating, they have, you know, disabled people would have to have a way to get up there. And I want I didn't want to do like an elevator or lift. So we went with a ramp, which ended up, I think, working out pretty well um, and you'll see I'm starting that construction right now just using the concrete uh, beam pillars here to sort of match the uh, texture and color of the deck itself I don't unfortunately that deck piece is a roof it's a smooth concrete roof so I can't tilt it at the angle I needed to so I had to use a different material um, one trick I encourage people to do is whenever you're duplicating a piece such as I'm what I'm doing right now Make sure you rotate, you know, one at the beginning, the other direction, um, just to give it a little bit of variation. Because if you don't, you can definitely see the pattern um, in the piece repeating itself. And I think just doing that slight rotation really helps alleviate that. It's not perfect, but it helps. I'm here just trying to add a little angle to the, uh, I guess, deck area, just to give it a little more variety. I think you always want to avoid square, you know, ordinary shapes whenever possible. If you can put that chamfer on there, that rounded or illusion of a rounded um, path, I, I suppose, uh, that goes a long way in helping your build look you know, different and unique. 
Now, I didn't mention this before, but the lounge chairs themselves, those are coming from my other water park I built in the past. I didn't want to remake those because I really liked how they had turned out. Um, I'm just So I just had pulled them from a blueprint. They're pretty simple. They're just the, um, I think it's the Bavarian window shutter, uh, which is a, kind of a nice texture, which kind of looks like the, uh, the lounge chair, like kind of rubber bands. I don't even know how to describe those. They're, I think you guys would know what I'm talking about if you've ever sat at like a pool chair at a water park. They have that kind of like elastic -y thing that is comfortable when you're sitting still, but when you try to move around, suddenly your foot like plunges through it or whatever. I, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, again with the wooden beams. Um, this is not done. I have to add a railing still, some details, but I just... I kind of was running out of time in the, on this episode, and I wanted to get something out to you guys for this episode. Um, and we do end up building an actual, a little more interesting uh, boathouse here, as you saw from the title, uh, coming up. But this side here, this will be the stair, the rampway up to the uh, storm rock slides over there, which do not have a name yet for each one, but we'll get to that. And here I go, starting on the boathouse itself. So as I start working on this, I do want to mention. I did get a new microphone. I'm hoping, and I guess you guys will be the judge, I'm hoping that the sound quality is significantly better in this episode than it has been in the last couple. Uh, it's, as a new YouTuber, it's still something I'm working through and mastering, you know, the, the best combination of effects and mic and, you know, type of recording to, to do and volume and all that just to get it, to get the audio right. So I'm hoping this will be a lot better uh, shout out to my girlfriend M for the mic for Christmas it was um, it's been great so far I think it's gonna be the answer and a lot um, better for you guys so on the boathouse here I am using the same roof as I did on the lighthouse building um, again that similar but different I think I talked about that in one of the last episodes trying to replicate the same elements but the challenge then being creating something that's still unique that doesn't look too repetitive. And I think I do that here uh, mainly with the colors being a little bit different. And you'll see that at the very end. And with just some of the detailing trim work and of course the orientation and relative space that it occupies um, with the assets around it that makes it unique. And that's something that is probably overlooked a lot. Um, even if a building has this exact same wall, the same roof, same windows, everything, just positioning it in, a, in a certain way with a different shape, with different assets and pieces of your park around it can actually go a long way uh, rather than, you know, two buildings on the same level in the same direction. Then they start looking even more repetitive. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge of how unique and different this building looks from the other, but um, I am going to try to use, I think, different materials in my next building. Uh, we'll see, that'll be in a later episode. Doing a little bit of work underwater here just to make those piers extend down. I'm not gonna be doing really any theming below the surface or anything, I just, it's a lot of work for really no payoff because no one's looking under the water. I mean, even in real life, you wouldn't be able to see under the water that far, so it just doesn't make sense, but, and there's a lot of space underwater to theme, so I have done like rocks in the past and I'll probably do a few on just like the shoreline kind of the shallow area um, but nothing substantial here this uh, building is not going to have an interior I am going to be doing a lot of interiors in this park but this building I decided against it it's pretty small I just wanted it to be a quick service stand up here at the slides just grabbing a bite to eat we have the restaurant storm rock shelter storm shelter steakhouse excuse me uh, that I built in episode two and that one's kind of going to be your nicer restaurant but this will just be your quick service uh, F&B they call it food and beverage uh, I learned that term from working in the industry itself um, it's pretty I mean pretty simple I wouldn't expect most of you have heard of that before but they always refer to the uh, food and beverage as F&B uh, whenever their architects are planning and working with that so Again, more detailing is going to come to this dock area. I'm going to I'm do quite a bit in this episode, but um, I did want to add a little bit more, you know, kind of crates and junk and stuff kind of on the pier and 
in the area in general. It just gives it a lot of life when you do that. So another thing I want to talk about um, as I'm working here on kind of the backstage, I add, I before I start <laughs> saying what I was going to say, I do want to point out I added this little extra piece here really on the back side of the building, really just to combine the locker rooms um, and kind of to give a space for some of the HVAC equipment, uh, something that you would need in, in some of these buildings. Um, just again for that realism. I'm um, just using the same assets and one thing about when you don't do an interior of a building that's nice is you can utilize it by sticking any object you want just halfway into the building and you know it won't be seen from the people inside because there is no inside. So I did that with the power generator there. Basically took a full-size power generator and made it a half size by just sticking it through the building. I think it works. You don't see the rest of it and you can hardly even tell that it's sticking through the wall. It just looks like a smaller piece. So that's a tactic you should always take advantage of anytime you're not doing an interior. Just use any piece you want, large pieces, and just bury them inside the wall. So back to what I was going to talk about. Um, you guys have seen in the episode title descriptions um, by now, but I didn't actually determine this until just recently. Um, I've just, you know, since I'm about five weeks ahead of you guys in recording, um, you know, that's just the nature of how it happens is I have an idea and you see it five weeks later. But anyway, um, the, I've decided I'm going to do a, actually do seasons in this uh, series. So just like a TV show, you have season one, season two, etc. I'm going to do the same thing um, just to kind of categorize and it's really more for myself and organizational reasons, but um, just to kind of segment off each area of the park that I do, um, I want each area of the park to be a, its own season um, and hopefully they'll have a number of implications. One, it'll make me finish a whole area before I move on to another. So kind of my own discipline um, tactic to keep me on on schedule. Two, it's going to um, help you guys in just finding episodes, being a little more organized, kind of, um, I think, add a little more structure to the to the show. Um, and then also, I am going to, in between seasons, so every episode will be every week. We'll have a new episode on Sunday at 3 p.m. is what I decided on. Um, and you guys have seen that now for four episodes. Um, so Sunday's at 3 new episode will come out and then after a season I'll probably spend a little more time to do more of like a cinematic um, kind of using maybe using cheat engine if I need to later down the road uh, to get a higher frame rate just a nice quality video kind of showing the, the area the finished area of the park in its entirety um, just in case you uh, haven't been able to open the park up itself I'll probably also release that version to the steam workshop at the end of the season for you to explore on your own. And then I'm going to have an extra week break in there. So it'll be like a two week break before the next episode, which will start the next season. Reason being just um, to give me a little time to catch up if I need to sort of help build in that buffer because I really want to stay on that weekly upload just to be consistent. And I think that's really important. So that is the plan anyway. So we're on episode five of season one, I think I'm expecting this season to be about 10 episodes, maybe, maybe more. I, I bet you it'll be more because that's always what happens. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of area to cover still in this in this island, but with all the detailing, I'm sure it'll push on for quite a few more. But may, 10 would be nice if we could get 10 episodes. That'd be a good, that'd be a good number. So we'll shoot for that. Uh, but no promises. So one thing I want to point out here is I'm working on this. Uh, trellis work again that I'm just kind of using that same asset copying it over um, those kind of concrete footers that I'm using the beams for again shout out to beams um, I had to actually change those a little bit because I realized later that they're poking through the underside and you can see them from below and it just looks bad so you'll see me working on that later just actually I think I cut that out um, all I did was really rotate them you'll see that they go through the wall instead of poking down below just kind of a sneaky tactic to still have them but keep them from uh, poking through the bottom uh, so here on the roof trim itself 
Uh, this is what I decided to go with, just those beams again with the wooden, um, I don't even know what you call that, trim work, I guess. I think it's from the Western theme pack. Um, it is in the base game, it's just the Western theme pieces. And I'm going to be adjusting the colors on these a little bit, but um, I think this looks so nice. It's it's pretty simple. I, I might have even have done this before on a building in a previous park, but I end up using the same exact trim work on the lighthouse building, uh, which I, I never finished that uh, roof trim in the last episode. So I do end up using that. You can see it now in the rest of the footage. So one thing I realized as I was building that the roof and the pieces were getting awfully close to those slides and I'm just imagining some teenage kid whipping down that slide and being like, hey look, you know, airtime, and then just like f flying off his mat and missing the slide and crashing into the building and dying or something. So we had to make a little, it a little more safe. And as I looked on some images in the web, I actually realized that all these mat racer slides, they actually have a higher wall on the outside on both sides um, for that exact reason, I'm assuming. I have definitely been on some myself where if you if you time it just right at the end of the slide, you can actually get a little air time and kind of go off the uh, slide, you know, maybe a couple inches. It's enough to feel pretty rad, but anyway, um, that's what we're building in here uh, just for that extra realism and safety, and I think it looks okay at the end of the day. Um, and then next here we'll be moving on to the actual exit point of the slide. So the idea would be they'd come down the slide and then they wouldn't be able to uh, disembark off the slide itself until they, you know, walk to the end of the slide here because you're not going to be able to step over that high wall. So I just wanted to make kind of a little area for them to, uh, them being the guests, to get off the slide and, you know, in a in an orderly, orderly manner and in a smaller area. Uh, it also helps me because I can build stuff closer to the slide on the other where the high wall is and not have to worry about leaving space and clearance for the guests to get off the slide. So they're going to walk to the end here. Uh, these blue uh, cylinder shapes I've sunk in are actually what I'm pretending they are is those those mats, if you've ever been in like a shallow kitty area maybe of a water park, if you go down like a slide they have they have sometimes they have those kind of like foamy, really soft mats at the bottom of the slide and you're after walking on the uh, in the pool on the rough concrete all day, you stand on one of those mats and you're like, oh gosh, I just want to sit here because this is nice and soft and then the lifeguard yells at you to move. But anyway, um, that's what I'm going for here, just like a little mat for them to step off on with some of the grading there around it just to catch the splash out of the water. In, in one of a one of the projects I worked on in real life now um, at my company, we actually had to design a splash out system uh, for the runouts themselves where they collect, you know, it's because they were worried, the client was worried about the water splashing out and not being able to drain anywhere. So we had to build in some deck drains and sort of, that's kind of where I got the inspiration from. Here's those beams I was talking about earlier that were poking through. So see, I just turned them sideways and kind of sink them into the wall and I think it gives an illusion similar way of the footers this last one here I couldn't do that for so I just left it I think it's really subtle you can't really see it um, sometimes you just have to say F it I'm just gonna leave it as it is because I'd rather have that beam barely sticking through uh, than not have a footer there I think it looks more out of place without the concrete footer to match the rest but I did want to add a little bit of trim work on this wall. It felt a little bare, um, so I just kind of went with these wooden uh, pillars. That's from the haunted house, the ha haunted house uh, wooden pillars. They're called, which really what they are is just the smallest wooden pillar in the game. That's what they should be called, because uh, that's what you're gonna want to be searching for. <laughs> Here's some some of the minor detailing just to give it a little more character. Uh, the seaweed. I like the seaweed, but it is a little green because I imagine it was intended for more of a pirate theme and less so of like a lighthouse stormy shore theme. So I think I'm going to keep it, but it's a little borderline for me. It's almost too green. It almost looks a little too tropical. Um, 
I tried to only use a few of them because I didn't want to overdo it. But I guess you leave a comment below what you think. If you think, if you think the seaweed is total rubbish or just uh, if it will work. So here's a little gap in the wall that I just used this stone, stone coin for and it blends in so well you can't even tell it's there. But sometimes you got to be creative in how you uh, cover up little walls and or gaps and little things like that. Just a little more trim work. You can see the boathouse is pretty close to being done. The backside I'm not going to worry about uh, because there will be a bunch of dark, uh, those dark, those jet black like rocks, the pointy rocks that you saw, the storm rock. Um, that will all continue on behind the slides and actually be present behind the boathouse itself. So I'm not worrying about theming that. Um, here's where I'm adding that little bit of color just to tie it into the mat racer slides and just to differentiate it a little bit from the other lighthouse building um, I think the color is I think it works I, I, I like it at first I was hesitant and then I you know started to like it oftentimes when you're building something at first you think it this looks terrible and then the more and more layers you add it's like peeling back an onion except you're adding layers to the onion instead of get ri getting rid of them I guess um, you just every time you add that layer it just looks a little better and you can sometimes just putting more detail into something is all it takes to take it to the next level and then of course other times more detail can be worse so I guess gotta have the eye for it but we are getting pretty close to the end here the last few details just adding on the sign work for the shop changing the color of the shop vendor it's something no one ever does but that bright red is just an eyesore so I always like to try to change it to match the color the theme of what i'm doing so i will see you guys in the next episode thank you for watching like and subscribe and i'll cut to some cinematics